Today we are taking a look at the final adjustments to the AOS 5.5, my perfect freestyle build. After the maiden flight is in now, I observed a few things I wanted to change and thanks to all of your comments, I will solder finally the interference shield to ground, which I just forgot <laughs> conveniently before I did the maiden flight. Also at the end of the video, we will check the all up weight. That was also requested to share and um, I will do that here. The dry up weight without battery and GoPro and then everything all up. Let's roll the intro. This is how the maiden flight ended. It's Matt and thanks for joining today. Welcome back to the channel. We take a look today at the final adjustments after the maiden flight to the AOS 5.5 build. The first thing and one of the most pressing ones was the camera. The cable was just too short and I swapped it out against the original DJI camera with a long cable. That has the effect that the quality itself is better now because the DJI camera, the original one, has basically the best quality from all cameras the DJI digital system can provide. And on top of that, the camera plates on the right and left from the camera cage are not in frame anymore. Also important was to fix the issue that the interference shield between the flight controller and the ESCs was not grounded. Thanks to all of you to point that out and I'm using this chance to show a little bit more about the frame and how difficult or how easy it is to work on it. The Model T Mini is now zip tied fixed to the camera cage. It is living vertically right next to the camera out of frame and I achieved that by moving the receiver a little bit forward that the cable is long enough for that and it's now really sitting nice and snugly fitting in that position. The other antenna, the normal Model T is living on the front right arm horizontally and that should provide always the best reception for the receiver itself no matter in what kind of flight position the AOS is. The cables for the power connector to the battery are also cleaned up and out of the way of the USB connector on the FC so that whenever we want to adjust things and plug it into better flight that we do not have issues to connect the flight controller. The cables from the DJI Air unit going to the flight controller are now wrapped in nylon tape to give them a little bit more protection and getting them easier out of the way of uh, all the other electronics. Instead of taping it to the arm, the GPS is now zip tied to the rear right arm. The spike absorber is now a little bit better mounted to the frame and zip tied to it so that it's not moving around and not responsible for any unnecessary vibrations. Same for the buzzer which is now zip tied with two zip ties to the front right standoff that this is also not going anywhere.
to solder on the ground wire to the interference shield between the flight controller and the ACs, basically I have to take the whole quad apart. And that reveals a little bit how easy or how difficult it is to work on it. When taking the cross bottom plate away, the arms are coming off and sliding out of the way, just like so. Then the screws for the mounting of the flight control and ESCs are revealed and we can work on them loosening them up. After that we can move the arms back into their original position, avoiding that the stack screws are falling out completely, making working on the electronics a little bit easier. And then the arms are sliding back in just like so. For soldering the interference shield to ground, we have to get the flight controller off and that also requires removing the wire from the air unit. Then we finally can get the interference shield out, soldering the wire on to the ground pad of the spike absorber and we can reassemble the whole quad. Looking at this deassembly process here, I think it's quite clear that the AOS is not a very huge quad. It is a 5.5 inch, but the space in the frame is quite compact. And that is actually what I personally really like about this efficient design. It fits a full size air unit and everything fits perfectly fine if it's well thought through and out how it should fit. But there's no space to waste. And that is a good thing, because in this compact form factor, which is not really bigger than a 5 inch, it can mount 5.5 inch props, reducing the disc load and has a much better performance in carrying heavier action cameras like heavier GoPros. And that improves the entire flight performance overall. Here's the ground wire already soldered soldered to the interference shield, wired to the spike absorber and just in case uh, that it's not touching any electronics on the FC, we are putting some electrical tape over it to be on the safe side in that regard. And this is now how the final assembly looks like of the AOS 5.5. I really like how it turned out to be. Just maybe I'm changing the mounting solution of the antennas hanging out at the back at some point, but right now I'm not really concerned uh, about those. An air tag is living also at the back of the AOS, so I will test a little bit if it is trackable and traceable in case it's somewhere going down. Before checking the final all up weight, I'm swapping out the props against props I've never flown with the AOS 5.5. And those are these pink ones here. I will discuss a little bit more about 5.5 inch props I have on hand for testing within the next flights, so stay tuned for that. The dry all up weight is coming in at 464 grams. Dry because it is without battery and camera. I like to keep the weight on a lower end and that is why I'm choosing a 5S battery, 100C and only 1100 amps. 
definitely not overpowering the AOS 5.5, but ample performance. That then brings us to 644 grams. And throwing a GoPro Hero 8 on it with an ND filter brings us to 783 grams, all up weight. And that is light, because we have to keep in mind it is not a 5 inch quad. The disc is a way bigger and we're having a 5.5 at that weight. I hope this video inspires you to explore your own options for going over 5 inch builds and reducing your disc load, having a different performance experience with your next freestyle build. Now that the AOS 5.5 build is actually coming to an end and we are going into the flight experience and sharing a lot of more footage from flight videos, I will take on another build video and that will be a special long range build. So stay tuned for that. And as always guys, thanks for watching. Have a great rest of the day. Stay safe and see you in the next one.